I am the Chunky Badger and welcome to Mind Games. I think it's fair to say that video games are an influential source of media. They can even be considered art. This is why they get monitored and censored as heavily as they do. They tend to be a frequent topic of conversation and what kind of influence they have on people. What effects can they have? We're going to be looking at physically, socially and psychologically. Enjoy. Helping improving our cognitive functions to even increasing the effectiveness of chemotherapy there is no doubt that video games can be a positive outlet and be beneficial. However, there are negative attitudes towards video games and the effects they have on people, and rightly so, there are some. It can lead to aggressive behaviour, Dude. Dude, quit. and if continued, it can develop medical issues. There is a stigma that video games make people into antisocial zombies, players that never leave their mum's basement, and we all know a few. There are many variables though, the personality of the person, or even the type of game that they're playing. I aim to break down this stigma, whilst not impeaching on the negative points, because there are some, and even I'll admit that. RaceSmartKids.com has a list of negative impacts that video games can have on people. It can create and encourage isolation, games with such in-depth storytelling are more likely to suck in players and allow them to get lost, sometimes escapism is too much for some people. For example, the couple that got so engrossed in their sims live that their actual baby died. Video games make people violent? This will increase the crime rate and the amount of violent crimes committed? We're going to put that to the test. We have gathered the national crime statistics for the past 5 years and we're going to analyse the crime rate happening around the time that violent video games were released onto the market. The statistics will be focused on overall crime rate and the amount of violent crimes committed. 2011's Mortal Kombat is the ninth in the series from Neverland and it came under much scrutiny because it was believed to encourage violence amongst the people that played it. This isn't the first time that Mortal Kombat has come under attack. The very first game which released in 1992 was heavily critiqued, there were even censored versions of the game released. The version for the SNES had blood entirely removed and fatalities were dialed back. I believe it is the vast improvements in graphics and the power of the platforms which has allowed developers to make the extreme violence and fatalities biologically accurate. Taking this into consideration, we looked at the crime survey for England and Wales in 2011 and it showed that recorded crimes actually decreased by 20% compared to the previous year. 2012 brought us the game Hotline Miami from Swedish developers Denaton Games. The game takes place in 1989's Miami and features two protagonists. The protagonists receive phone calls that instruct them to do ordinary tasks at a certain location, but they then get inferred as instructions to kill everybody. Once again, this game features ultra-violence and adult themes. It even has a reward scheme which awards players with weapons and other items based on their performance. As you can imagine, people flipped shit, claiming that this will increase violence and the crime rate. Nope. Crimes against the person fell by 4% and violent crimes decreased by 7% on their own. September 2013 was the first release of the long-awaited Grand Theft Auto V. The game was a fantastic hit, making $800 million on its first day of release. You take control of three protagonists, Michael, Trevor and Franklin, whose aim is to pull off heists in order to repay a mob boss. I'm not going to delve into every issue people have with GTA, because no matter what side you fall onto, you've heard them all before and are tired of it. Shooting random people, killing prostitutes, apparently raping them, you can't, it's total bullshit. However, you can go to a strip club and enter a mini game to touch the strippers without getting caught. How lovely. Surely a game with such a history of claims of violence had to increase the amount of crimes? No, there was a 16% decrease compared to last year's survey. 2014's Wolfenstein The New Order is the seventh game in the main series with a history dating all the way back to 1981's Castle Wolfenstein. The plot is an alternate history where the Nazis win World War II. You take control of BJ Blazkowicz who gets sent to assassinate General Death Zed. The mission is a huge failure and BJ tries to escape but gets injured in comatose for 14 years. You wake up and must find the resistance in order to take out the Nazis and their control. It's an extremely bloody FPS. The combat has enemies being torn apart by a variety of guns, leaving mutilated bodies on the bloodstained ground. Okay, a game about Nazis winning World War II or extreme bloody violence had to increase violence crime rate. There was in fact a decrease by 7.04%. Hatred, a game that looks so shocking and brutally violent that it was pulled from Steam's Greenlight program. This wasn't surprising considering the description for the game read, you will go out for a hunt, you will clear the American soil, you will shoot, you will hurt, you will kill, you will die. You are the lord of life and death. 
Now, the crime survey states there were 6.5 million crimes committed, 100,000 less than 2014. However, violence rose by 16%, possession of knives rose by 9 and offences involving sharp objects rose by 4 the problem with those last statistics is that they were gathered 30 days after the game came out. How can they represent that year? If all those crimes happened within the month of June, I'd say that video games definitely increased the violence and crime rates. So what do these statistics mean? It appears that overall violence is getting lower and lower. It is at the lowest it has ever been. There were scarce spikes, but there wasn't any proof that weapon possession went up due to the violent video games. We could infer that since violent games come out, people are using whatever pent-up aggression they have on the games. They act as a release. Professor Henry Jenkins from Massachusetts Institute of Technology has been investigating the link between games and violence, and he has noted that players are able to leave whatever emotional attachment they have with the game. Could we go as far to say that video games are actually good for society? They can have a daunting effect on people such as eye strain, fatigue and repetitive strain injuries. Kicking off negative physical aspects of video games, we have some images from case studies. These people have fallen victim to their own pastimes. Warning, slightly grotesque images ahead. Case number one, Atari skinning. Don't worry, not many people get this now. Case number two, 3D optical disorder. Case number three, PlayStation thumb. Case number four, Wiimote shoulder dislocation. Case 5, WASD Syndrome. Case 6, Xbox Hypertrophy. Doesn't make sense because we have achievements on Xbox. Case 7, FPS Carpal Tunnel Syndrome. Finally, Case 8, Nintendo Arthritis. One of the most common problems people have when they play video games is something called repetitive strain injury. We're going to go over to our resident nurse to talk all about that. Hello, my name's Amanda and I've been a nurse for seven years now. I've been asked to talk a little bit about uh, repetitive strain injury. Uh, it's classically um, diagnosed with uh, stiffness in the hands or the wrist, sharp pains, dull pains, tingling, um, poor grip, impaired grip uh, in small fine motor movements. Increasingly, it's now being seen in those that game for several hours at a time. This has actually occurred in quite a few people um, it, it can be reversed as long as you don't ignore the symptoms for too long. Uh, you may have to wear hand braces or such like to hold your wrist in a different fashion. However, if you take regular breaks from gaming, this would not happen. As stupid as it sounds, people have actually died from playing video games for too long. Two Taiwanese men died from a marathon gaming binges within three weeks of one another in 2015. The first was a 38 year old man who was found dead after playing video games for 5 days straight in an internet cafe in Taipei. The second was a 32 year old man who died from cardiac arrest after playing for 3 days without stopping, so clearly not as good as the first man. Authorities noted that none of the other gamers in the cafe seemed to even notice that one of their own was being carted off. How fucking sad is that? A 20 year old man died after playing up to 12 hours on his Xbox. He suffered from a blood clot which caused a blockage in his lung, commonly known as deep vein thrombosis. All these people were adults, shouldn't they have known? Maybe these people suffered from addictions. Whilst video games are primarily made for entertainment purposes, there are developers out there making ones that fall under the genre of serious games. Serious games have a motive behind them in order to benefit players psychologically and physically. Grendel Games, founded in 2006, are well known for making these serious games, which is mightily impressive considering there are only 10 people that work there. A game that they developed called Underground is a game specifically designed to train surgeons to increase their skills at performing keyhole surgery. The game was made for Wii U in order to take advantage of their amazing motion controls. There is a controller that you can buy for 250 euros, which mimics the setup that surgeons would have while performing. Keyhole surgery involves going in through a very small hole into a part of the body using cameras and a guided implement through a tube into the body. The surgeon has to be extremely skilled with manual dexterity to manoeuvre the camera and the instruments inside that cavity to then carry out the operation that he needs to perform. Whether you like to believe this or not, video games are actually helping to save people's lives. There are a number of games which are designed to boost the mood of cancer patients. For example, the game Remission, a third person shooter, released in 2006 based on research from Hope Labs and developed by Real Time Associates, was built to engage young cancer patients whilst informing them about their condition. 
it also improves their adherence to chemotherapy. Players control Voxy, a nanobot whose job it is to go inside the body and fight particular types of cancer and related infections such as non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and leukemia. A sequel was released shortly after which is a collection of games. This time, Remission 2 has 6 games to play. The art style and type of gameplay is aimed more towards younger people, almost taking the form of a mobile game. These games target players psychologically in order to give them a sense of control and power over their conditions. Hope Labs followed 375 teens and young adults with cancer at 34 medical centres during their 3 months of treatment. There was a control group which got PCs loaded with popular games and the other group were given remission. Participants given remission maintained higher levels of chemotherapy in their blood and took their antibiotics more regularly than those in the control group. Professor Wallace from the University of Hull stated, Some people like to imagine their white blood cells as soldiers with bayonets fighting for them. This mentality helps younger people envisage what their bodies are actually doing and to encourage them to carry on with chemo. On screen are QR codes for you to download Nanobots Revenge. The one on the left is for the App Store and the one on the right is for the Play Store. Playing games to help cure cancer? Genes in Space is an asteroid shooter which just so happens to be the first free mobile game that uses the power of the player base to analyse real genetic data in order to help beat cancer sooner. Each route that gamers choose to fly the spaceship and each piece of element alpha, the rings collected, uses data taken from cancer patients' genes to help create a new genetic pattern. Each time the game is played, these patterns are fed back to the scientists who can detect hotspots and faulty genes within these patterns that could be targeted with new treatments. This in turn has the ability for doctors to diagnose cancer very early. This game has been invaluable to Cancer Research UK as it has increased data getting analysed 15% faster. If you wish to help, you can scan the QR codes to take you to places where you can download the game. The App Store is the one on the left, and the Google Play Store is the one on the right. Their motto is, you don't have to wear a lab coat to help beat cancer sooner. So, I think we can come to an agreement that video games aren't as bad as the media and people think they are. There will always be two sides to a coin though. This is something that will never change. I just hope this has put more weight onto the right side. I have been the Chunky Badger. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.